I talked about hunting monsters. Tay 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 talked about hunting monsters and monsters uh, and monsters. <laughs> and Spencer's here to talk about the third thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about Breath of Fire. But, as a fan okay, of was, RPGs, it was getting horny in here. Now it's all that. It's all nothing. Uh, I mean, there's some hot people in here. Some hot chicks, some fairies. Spencer's here to bring the wrath. Yeah, is I... is anyone as hot as the Rathalos? Uh, no. <laughs> That's the hottest Capcom character. <laughs> Ranking hot Capcom characters, Rathalos. <laughs> Put it in the S. Don't spoil the later videos. <laughs> Uh, Breath of Fire is an RPG developed by Capcom. It was released in uh, Japan in April 1993 and was released in August 1994 in America. Uh, and that one was done by Squaresoft as the mm. publisher there. It's kind of mm. interesting. Um, it's recognized as their first traditional role-playing game. Um, and it uh, features character designs from artist Keiji Inafun was the original designer. Explains a lot. And then it was switched later. Um, he was yanked out. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, In Inafune's supervisor took him off the project and replaced him with Tatsuya Yoshikawa. Uh, it has a lot of Easter eggs in it, including Chun Li from Street Fighter. And uh, yeah, when it was when it was translated over to America, they used Ted Woolsey, who I'm sure uh, Teddy re remembers from some of our work. He's the famous. Uh, he did a lot of them, including he did uh, Final Fantasy Legend Three, Mystic Quest, Secret of Mana. He and he dealt with tons of translations. He was a pretty big name in that. Uh, so Breath of Fire is, it's a weird one because it's designed to be very old school. And we talked about this in one of the other videos a little bit, but I'll just reiterate here. It's designed to be very old school. Um, so you won't find a lot of customization stuff you might find in games from the same era. Doesn't mean it's bad per se. It's just kind of, to me, it's kind of bland and I'll get into some of the reviews about that. Um, one of the cool things about it is that all the enemies have health bars, which is something that I actually kind of admire. Uh, I like kind of seeing my progress working on an enemy, including bosses, and I think it adds tension to a game. Um, so I, I I actually like that piece of it. Um, one of my problems with the first one is that it it has a lot of solo play for a long time. Which wouldn't be that big of a problem if there was a little more customization, but there's literally none. So you're just kind of stuck with the main character and just upgrading his armor and weapons. Um, Story-wise, it was kind of bland. There wasn't a whole lot exciting going on there. And then when you finally did get party members, it, it makes it a lot more interesting. Um, and, and one of the cool things that on the world map, you can use party members' skills to help you traverse things, um, which is really interesting and isn't really done in most rpgs of the time and even now because they don't really do world maps anymore um which i kind of miss now that like i understand that they're not really necessary on modern consoles but i also kind of miss the days when you just traverse an open world map and just you kind of get a really high level view of everything i don't know maybe that's just old man pointing uh, shaking his fist at clouds i guess but Part of me misses yeah, that. Old, old man yells at Cloud. <laughs> yeah. Dom In my Nimula. day. Nimula. Yeah. Hey, who knows? Maybe Witcher 4, maybe Jerry of the Ripper will be in a little overworld, you know? <laughs> um, let's go to some of the reviews for it. Retrospectively, uh, it remains a 78% average score on game rankings, a 79% on Metacritic. Uh, debuted as a in Japan as the third highest selling game of its first week. I know that they like to chronicle things by week there. I don't know why. Selling 22,236 copies. It would sell a total of 63,000 copies by the end of 2001. So 
Never really broke even the hundred thousand. Uh, it's weird because at the time, so like nineteen ninety four, we're seeing Final Fantasy two in America, and some Dragon Quest. Although that's more at this point, I believe, relegated to Super Nintendo or, or sorry, Japan. Um, and I don't really think this game trounces either in any respect. It's seems so far behind like this honestly seems like an nes game that's just like a little bit like that's a lot prettier mm -hmm. um but it's so rooted in the old school much more so than dragon quest which is more of a playful rooting in the old school and it, it embraces old and then has some little like, touches that make it exciting this seems to lack some of that and i know some of our fans like this series so i don't want to just bash on it because it does have good qualities but it, I just think it's missing something. Um, it would eventually be ported to the or Game Boy Advance in a bit of a semi-remake or whatever. It's got a couple improvements, but not much. It's more of a port than a remake. It spawned five sequels, if you want to include the 2016 uh, mobile release. Um, that I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of fans would sooner forget than not. It, it died in a year. Um, I, played, I played the hell out of it. Yeah, you're you're the whale that they were sticking to. Uh, it had it had two, which was on Super Nintendo. Three and four were on the PlayStation, and then five, which is called Dragon Quarters, uh, was released on the PS2 and basically killed the entire series. It seems like I read in an interview that in 2006 or 2009. One of those, both of those dates, they talked about it. Um, it's essentially been announced that it's a dead franchise, which is weird because then they released it on mobile, clearly just trying to make a cash grab. And um, I think they probably regret that now. But this series is essentially dead. Although with the modern push for JRPGs, I'm wondering if this is, might be coming back on the menu. Because there was a time like, I would say 360 era. I always call it 360 era because that just defines it to me. Where JRPGs seemed like they were pretty much dead. Um, they weren't really making them anymore. And if they did, they'd probably be more action-based. So the turn-based RPG was essentially gone. Uh, but now, late PS4, and now it's like JRPGs are back in a huge way. There's so many that get released. I think it's probably time they consider busting this one out if not a remake just a new one i'm sure people would appreciate seeing it again if they combine breath of the wild and breath of fire would it be breath of the wildfire yeah okay yeah it would just be set in california okay or canada now or canada yeah 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 you seem well okay so i guess it makes sense because this is capcom month and you're the rpg guy uh, I don't know. I don't really think of other like turn-based RPGs by Capcom. I know the Mega Man, uh, Battle Network ones, but Monster Hunter stories. <laughs> yeah, even then, I don't know. I mean, like, do you think Capcom can make turn-based? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They could. They could do it. They could even get. I mean, they they clearly have no issues getting help from SquareSoft just to release it over. In America, I'm sure they could work something out with them, like help us make this, and we'll do something. They would, they would be able to make one, even if it's again, if the, even if they just wanted to remake it and just remaster it with some updated visuals and something, they could get something going. Three and four, specifically three, has a fan base that's pretty. They think it's like the best one is three. Okay. Um, so if they could remaster that or bring it back in some big way. They don't have to change much. Just just make it look nicer, more modern, appropriate. I think they could get some money out of it and, and see how it sells. I'm sure they'd be open to it. They've been, I mean, Capcom recently, very recently, they're doing that like uh, remake of fucking Ghost Trick. Yeah. The S game, it. right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. So like, and that's a random ass game. So I can see them just being like, hey, Breath of Fire. <laughs> like, here's, here's a game. <laughs> Goody HD, baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's just make them all look the same. Stop <laughs> saying it. <laughs> no, I don't want it. No, I don't. I don't think that that look would work for it because it's more of an anime style for 
for Breath of Fire. But so you want to date the date the characters as that you're asking. Make sure they add a dating system. Yes. Date. I I would date them for sure. Make or date. Like make or would date. you date the Rathalos? Um yeah. I have yeah, actually. The Rathalos yeah, uh, would date you. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Spencer, Rath- did, Spencer dated the Rathalos. His signature yeah. sex move is unleash the wrath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wrathed into me. I went monster hunting. Teddy went monster hunting and Spencer went monster hunting. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hey y'all, don't forget to subscribe to them button mappers.